I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Flappy Turd mobile game tutorial series. Sorry it's been so long, I've had quite a bit going on in real life. But here we are, we're back and we're ready to add some more stuff to the game. So let's play it and see what we've got going on and then we will get into the changes we're going to be making in today's episode so at the moment we can we can tap the screen with our finger or our mouse and we can move through the pipes and we can clock up scores if we're good enough to get through the first pipe then it shows us our high score underneath our current score and that's as far as we got so what we need to add in now is the ability to reset the game and we're going to start by heading over to layout one on the ui layer we're going to double click and we're going to add a sprite. I'm going to make my sprite 64 by 32. I'm going to change the image point to the top left. And I'm just going to color it. Uh, I'm going to color it slightly off white. And I'm going to pop it just there underneath the high score. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the high score text. I'm going to right click and I'm going to clone and I'm going to change this to try again. So this text is going to be called txt underscore try again. It's going to not be visible initially. So make sure that this box is not checked. On that note, let's make this not initially visible and we're going to give it a better name and we're going to call this one reset box because that's what's going to be the background of our text then in the text default uh, property here i'm just going to put try again with a question mark now they're both set to not visible when we start so if we play we're not going to see them but what we need to do is make them visible and clickable when we die so let's right click and we're going to add a group and i'm going to call this one restart game and let's go back into the functions panel under our game over function and when we call that game over function we're going to set them visible so we're going to say text try again set visible and we're going to say reset box set visible now because we're setting them visible on a function that's called at the end of the game we need to now copy those by pushing Control c on the keyboard when they're highlighted and paste them into on start of layout and set them invisible otherwise they're going to stay visible forever so we just need to make sure that we're retelling the system that when we restart we need to make them both invisible again now, in the restart game group, let's add an event and we're going to say touch. I'm going to say on, on tap object. That object is going to be the try again text. And we're going to add a condition because don't forget that that object is still going to be there throughout the game. It's just going to be invisible. So if we accidentally tap that while we're trying to jump, it's going to reset the game. So push C on the keyboard and we're going to say uh, reset uh, text try again. We're going to say is visible. So I only want that to be able to work if that text is visible and we're only going to be making it visible at the game over stage. Now, when we tap it, let's go and add an action and we're going to go system. And we are going to say restart layout. We're going to jazz it up, don't worry. This is just the functionality. So when we tap it, it's going to restart the layout. Now we're going to run into an issue here because the time scale is going to be set to zero, which means that when we restart, nothing's going to happen. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So we can work just fine here. Everything is working. We die. Try again, and everything's just frozen in place. So that means that when we start the level, we need to reset the time scale back to one. So let's copy this, that time scale zero. In the on start of layout, let's paste it, drag it right to the top, and change that zero to a one. Now 
Now when we crash, <clears throat> we can try again, and when we try again, we can start playing as we were before, and our score will clock up, and now when I die, our high score should also reset to 1. But we don't know what these numbers really mean, because they're just numbers on a screen. So let's give them a little bit of an identity. So in the setup group, let's click add event, and we're going to say text high score, and we're going to, sorry, we're going to say system every tick, and we're going to say text high score, and we're going to set that text to, in the quotation marks there, high score, colon space, then the and symbol, and then the high score variable. <clears throat> so now when it appears, it's going to be obvious exactly what that number is, where at the moment it just says, oh, it just says one. And that's because, oh no, it's wide enough. Every tick set high score to high score and high score. Do we have it conflicting somewhere? Oh, here you go. If only I'd have just checked. Uh, <laughs> we've got it conflicting. We've got it down here and the scoring on the every tick. What a du what a dummy. Okay, let's let's just drag that down. Pop that in there. Delete that. Um, so we've got set text high score to local. Uh, no, we don't need that anymore. Uh, and high score and then that will be absolutely fine and shame on me for not checking that prior this is why i don't do live streams great there we go now we've got a high score zero and we've got that score variable as well and we've got try again which allows us to try again so the functionality works just fine i'll see you in the next episode